Welcome. This is Charles McNamara, your virtual instructor. Today's training will cover the A49 Certificate of Fitness from the FDNY. You must go to 9 Metro Tech in Brooklyn, New York to take this exam. You will want to make sure you're well prepared, bring your ID card, paperwork and pen. Make sure that you're watching the clock here as your number will be called. When your number is called, you must go to the appropriate counter. Do not miss this as they will go to the next person. Then you will need to go to the cashier's window to make payment. Once you have made payment, you'll begin your exam. Once again, you must go to 9 Metro Tech in Brooklyn, New York, Monday through Friday, except legal holidays. This computer-based exam will consist of 20 multiple choice questions. You will have 35 minutes to complete the test. A passing score of at least 70% is required to obtain a certificate of fitness from the FDNY. All exams are $25. It is very important to review the FDNY study material which can be found on their website. This book is provided to the public for free by the FDNY. Aerosols are classified into three different levels. Level 1, Level 2, and Level 3. A FDNY permit is required to store, handle, or use level 1, 2, or 3 aerosol products in excess of 100 pounds net weight. Permits shall be posted in a conspicuous location on the premises. This chart will break down the volume by net ounce as well as number of cans. It is important to understand this chart and review this thoroughly, as it will come up on your exam. Welcome to the Dangerous Goods Learning Series. In this video, you will learn what a safety data sheet is, where to get a safety data sheet, and why they are required. A safety data sheet, often referred to as an SDS, is a document used to communicate the hazards of chemical substances found in products. Examples of products that have a safety data sheet include household cleaning products, spray lubricants, and nail polish remover. Where do you get a safety data sheet? The product manufacturer or an SDS authoring service produces SDSs. Why is a safety data sheet required? A safety data sheet gives us information we need to ensure we handle, store, and transport your product safely. Let us look at an example of how an Amazon Fulfillment Center uses a safety data sheet. Meet Sam. Today, Sam is storing a bottle of tile cleaner in the restricted product section of the Fulfillment Center. Whoops! Sam has dropped the bottle and it has spilled on the floor. Sam looks on the bottle and sees it has a corrosive pictogram displayed on it. Sam received training to clean up hazmat spills. First, she checks the SDS. It indicates she is to wear protective clothing when cleaning a spill, so she puts on rubber gloves and eye protection. The SDS also states that this corrosive must be segregated from other chemicals when being disposed of. If Sam did not have the SDS, she could have put herself and her colleagues in danger. Aerosols, product that is dispensed by the way of propellants Classified as follows. Level 1. Product with a total chemical heat of combustion that is greater than 0 and less than or equal to 8600 BTUs, British Thermal Units. Level 1 products are predominantly water-based. Some examples are shaving gel, whipped cream. Level 2 products with a total chemical heat of combustion that is greater than 8600 but less than or equal to 1300 BTUs. Level 2 products are often alcohol 
formulated based. Some examples are hairsprays, sunscreens, insect repellent. Level 3 products with a total chemical heat combustion greater than 13,000 BTUs. Some examples of level 3 products are hydrocarbon formulated based, such as carburetor cleaner, petroleum based aerosols. A special note, aerosol level cannot be determined by the product. Aerosol products in cartons that are not identified or labeled shall be classified as level 3. There are many terms and definitions listed in the study booklet. You should give yourself time to read through, understand, and memorize these definitions as they will be very important in the rest of the study guide and training material. They will also come up during your exam. It is important to understand the NFPA hazard 704 diamond sign explanation. Each color represents something different. Blue will represent the specific health hazard. Red, the fire hazard or flammability. Yellow, reactivity or instability and white will be the specific hazard. The way that it is rated is from zero being the lowest and four being the highest or deadliest. In general, aerosol containers shall not be stacked more than six feet high from the base of the aerosol array. When storage or retail display is on shelves the height of such storage or retail display to the top of the aerosol containers shall not exceed 8 feet from the floor. Display cut cartons. The length of the carton side panel on the display shall be a maximum of 2 inches. The correct length is shown on the right hand side. When a sprinkler system is required for the protected retail display, the wet pipe sprinkler system must be approved by the fire department and the department of buildings. It is extremely important to become familiar with these charts for the exam. Understand the maximum quantities of level 2 and level 3 aerosol products in retail displays. When it's placed on the floor, the basement, ground, or the upper floors in protected and unprotected areas. Level 2 and 3 aerosols are to be stored in the storage areas directly next to the retail displays of the product. This chart breaks down storage cabinets, segregated and non-segregated storage. Once again, for the basement floors, ground floors, and upper floors of a facility. Segregated storage. Separation is extremely important. So we will review the chain link fence. One hour fire resistant rated walls. Two hour fire resistance rated walls. And three hour fire resistance rated walls. Now we'll talk a little bit about outdoor storage of level 2 and level 3 aerosol products. Public streets and private roads need to be at least 20 feet minimum distance. Buildings a minimum of 50 feet. Public streets, private roads need to be at least 50 feet. Lot lines at least 20 feet minimum and other outdoor hazardous material storage areas need to be at least 50 feet. In the event of a fire emergency, immediately call 911. It is important to understand the different classes of fire. Class A is your basic wood, paper, trash. Class A. Class B 
gasoline, oil, flammable liquids. Class C, electrical fires. Class D, combustible metals or alloys. Class K, kitchen fires. Portable fire extinguishers do need to be visually inspected on a monthly basis and then serviced annually by the proper certificate of fitness holder. In the event of a fire emergency, you can grab the fire extinguisher and use the pass method. Pull the pin, aim at the base of fire, squeeze the lever, sweep from left to right. Appendix A, Sample Retail Quick Daily Check. While every building is different in its own special way, it's important to conduct a daily check of the building. General responsibilities, good housekeeping, and fire safety. In the back of your study material, Appendix B will give you a sample SDS sheet. Appendix C is definitely worth a read to review several worst case scenarios in fire safety. Once again, it is your responsibility to review this book thoroughly and understand the material in it. These booklets can be found on the fire department's website. Thank you for watching this video. Good luck on your exam and feel free to follow me on LinkedIn.